In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about exposure, exposing for the highlights and histogram. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris and Los Angeles, and I make one tutorial per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file for all the past episodes, including this episode, where I'm giving you two raw files from Paris. And click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I talked to you about using Lightroom brushes to retouch a portrait. Check it out. This week, I'm going to talk to you about a question I get a lot about exposure. What does exposing for the highlight means? How to properly expose your photo to get the best out of your raw file in Lightroom. And I'm going to give you all the things that have worked for me over the years. But before, I also want to announce that I have an amazing discount on my full bundle of Lightroom 5 training. You have to put in the code LR540, which is LR540, to get a discount on my website, and you will get the entire course for more than half of the price of each individual video. So I hope you appreciate that. But let's get started and let me show you how to expose property photos per my recipe. All right, guys, I want to talk to you about some basics of understanding the histogram and proper exposure. Now, I have a specific workflow that has worked for me for years that I want to share with you. First thing first, um, I know this is something I do a lot in videos, but I don't know explain why, and I want to get into more details on it. What I do when I shoot a landscape, and especially if the sun is in the shot, is I expose for the highlight. Now, what does that mean? If you look at this photo, this is the raw file on retouch. We can see all the details in the sky. The sky is properly exposed, but the building is very dark. Okay, now if we look at the histogram, and what is an histogram? Well, a histogram is a little statistics of your dark values, uh, mid-gray values, mid-tone values, sorry, and the bright values. Basically, anything which is here, um, anything which is here is basically dark values, anything which is dark. You can see there's a little hill there, and it means that there is a lot of dark uh, in the photo, which you can tell, of course, because all the buildings are dark. And... Um, and you can see there's almost no value here in the sort of like the you know not so dark shadows in the mid-tones there's a bit of information and in the highlights we don't have much information so the whole idea what i want to do now that is i want to get this histogram to distribute better the information and the, the great thing about it is that basically uh, what lightroom is is like um uh, you know very laser precise touching of your histogram if I over the histogram with my mouse, you can see that the first part of the histogram is the blacks. Then the second part, and you can see this, is there's a little gray overlay on it. The second part is the shadows. If I open up the shadows, look what it does. It takes all these values and spread it much better. Okay, now here is the exposure, which is basically all the mid values. And here on the right is the highlights. Now, if I bring down the highlights, I'm again going to bring down everything. But you see now we've got a nice sort of hill, okay? And if I go here totally to the, uh, to the end of the histogram, I have the whites. So now when I press the Alt key and I move the whites to the right, and I stop when I start seeing some red pixel, what I'm doing basically, check it out, look at the histogram, is I'm spreading, I'm distributing the values even better. You see, now we've got a nice hill everywhere. Let, and um, same thing for the blacks. I'm going to hold on the, the Alt key and I'm going to do the blacks, but on the blacks, I almost have nothing to do. So now, if I'm going back in time when I reset the settings, which is here, uh, look, at the, look at the histogram. It's got like one high mountain here and a small hill there. And now everything is kind of well spread. We got a nice hill everywhere. It, this does not mean that this is going to work for all your photos. And in fact, I'm going to prove you that it's not the case. Well, just to finish up this photo, I'm going to put this one on shade because it's a raw file and I can. And I'm going to add some, you know, little tint and maybe just a little vibrance. And voila, a nice photo of the Pont Neuf. Okay, let me show you another example, which is the opposite. Let me show you this photo. Uh, I'm going to reset it first. Uh, this is a photo of the Conciergerie in Paris, and it's very overexposed. So you can see from the histogram, we have here basically a lot of information on the right. And actually, if you press this thing, you can see that all these values are clipped, meaning that they are 100% white. There is no gradient. There is no detail. It's harsh, harsh, pure white. 
okay? Now you can turn this off by clicking this again. Now, if I'm gonna do my workflow, my usual workflow of opening up the shadows and bring down the highlights, it's not gonna work on this photo because this photo was not taken for the highlights, meaning uh, exposing for the highlights. On this one, I would have to bring down the highlights, probably bring down the entire exposure, voila, and then I can bring up a little bit the shadows and bring down the blacks. So you basically play around with these four settings until you got your values well distributed in your histogram. Okay, let me show you an, uh, the same photo, but this time much darker, exposing for the highlights, and it's gonna work now. I'm gonna open up the shadows, I'm gonna bring down the highlights, and then I'm gonna do my little white and my little black, and look at, look at the values, look at the histogram before. I mean, it was pretty well distributed, but now it's distributed again, but in a different fashion in a different fashion and the photo is more pleasing, okay? And um, let me show you another one that I exposed for the highlights, so that's a classic shot. So I'm gonna open up the shadows. Now look, look at the histogram again, let's talk. We have a big hill there and then not much information, it's very average everywhere, okay? Now if I open up the shadows and bring down the highlights, now we got a nice hill. We've got lots of values everywhere. And now I'm gonna do my black, and I'm gonna do my white. Now, I don't necessarily press the Alt key all the time. And then I'm gonna put this probably on shade and add a bit of magenta. And boom, a nice sunset in Paris. On this one, I would add vibrant. You know, I would do the auto lens correction. But you get the idea. So I just wanna make sure, I wanted to explain really why do I do this plus 100, minus 100, and how they react to the photos. But it's really how you take the photos in the first place. And my advice is shoot for the highlights. So your photos should, some, should look at something like this. I'm gonna reset this one. Um, you see how everything is dark, but we have details here, it's not blown out, okay? Let me show you again this one. I'm gonna reset this one again. And boom, we got all the details in the sky and, and you know, all this in the shadows. But if you look at the shadows, we can still see on the raw file on retouch some details here. Okay, so I hope that answers some question on what I consider to be a right exposure, and why do I do this plus 100, minus 100 over and over time, you know? It's good to get back to the basics sometimes. Guys, have fun doing some photography. Go out there, spring is coming, sunset are arriving. It's going to be an amazing season. Mesdames et messieurs, see you later. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any other ideas or things you want me to talk or explain you, I will do my best to honor this. Just leave a comment under this video. If you also can share it, it would be amazing. Thank you so much, and I will see you in another episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.